Um, so now we'll go to Tom from Public Planning. So I'm, I'm Tom, I'm a member of, well, we're, we're Southwark and Lewisham Tenants now. Um, quite a lot of our members aren't affordable in fact, you know, are that out of the So um, <laughs> most of our members have been kicked out and are in Lewisham now. Um, and we're a member of the London Renters Coalition, which is a coalition of uh, various private tenants groups. I think it's, I think it's in nine or ten um, boroughs now. Um, and, and we use a variety of tactics. Quite a lot of this depends on the group, their expertise, and, and often their relationship with the council. So that, that would include um, responding to local or national government consultations, um, uh, engaging with the press. Um, quite a lot of groups, like we've got on a joint event with Lambeth Renters, that's got on kind of legal advice and parental rights night with people from um, North Renters, which maybe fills in a little bit of the gap that the Dave was talking about. But um, so I wanted to kind of focus today um, on, on some more of the kind of direct action that we've done, uh, partially as the, the focus of this, of this talk, but also because I think those are kind of the points where the logic of the demands we make and the logic of the action we're taking necessarily kind of moves beyond focusing just on private renters and start focusing on, on issues around the squat and what the council has to do. Um, and also, one of the crucial things is as, as private renters, we, we kind of all understand how inherently exploitable private renting is, and that kind of market-based solutions based on private renting are not going to resolve the housing crisis. So we can we can bring this experience of how exploitable private renting is to other groups, struggle with people, struggles where, for example, social housing tenancies are becoming increasingly similar to private rental tenancies. We we know how bad this is. Um, so I just want to talk very quickly about why we've kind of taken um, direct action. Um, and one of the most important reasons actually, um, which, which relates to some of the other points that's been made, is about how much direct action can develop solidarity um, within the group. Um, some of this is about actions that are successful. And I think it's, I think it's really vital actually to celebrate, even, even if they're only very small scale victories, which might be resisting one eviction, it might be getting a story highlighted in the press. I think it's really important actually to celebrate even like very small scale victories, even though the kind of landscape of housing at the moment is, is quite bleak. Um, so it, it builds all that in the group. Um, one of the actions we did as solid tenants jointly with Lambert Renters, we um, we occupied flats in the Strata in Elton Castle. Um, and, and a couple of people who were involved in that action hadn't been involved in, in any sort of direct action before, and they came away quite quite excited about doing this kind of stuff again. So I think this is, this is really useful. Also using direct action tactics as well as the other kind of strategies we have, having this diversity of tactics also means we can attract some of the diversity of people to um, private rent struggles. Um, and the other thing that's, that's kind of vital about these sort of, these sort of actions is, is, is they're kind of proactive. I, I mean, I think it's, it's sometimes quite easy to get caught up in kind of like defensive responses. Say, um, CCLG, for example, recently had a, a consultation about making evictions easier. Um, they're already incredibly easy, mm -hmm. um, but making them even easier. Um, and obviously it's right to respond to that, to explain why, why we think this is a problem. But when the current situation is so bad, it's a necessity to, to kind of try and take control of the agenda and actually push for security at the for ending Section 21, which allows retaliation eviction. So one thing we've done recently as a group, we, we occupied the um, reception of, of CCLG to demand not just that they don't make evictions easier, but that they end Section 21 and actually the proper security at the is, is introduced for um, private renters. I mean, this. If we're talking about security of tenure, this necessary kind of cuts across groups. Again, it cuts into council housing, it cuts into um, squatters groups. Actually, the event, we planned it quite extensively with some squatter owners <coughs> in the end, they didn't come along because they were um, resisting the eviction in, in Christmas Park. But this is something where we're starting to build an action with um, other groups. Um, similarly, there's kind of the occupation of strata and another occupation we did where we occupied a flat in Stratford Halo um, and held a party. Um, this again kind of necessarily cuts across tenure. So the, the Stratford Halo action was supported by activists from the Carpenters Estate and from Action East End. So part of our demands was about unaffordability of private renting and the necessity of rent control. But if you're kind of reckoning with the developments in Stratford, there needs to be a kind of the logic of our position demanded something more general because we start addressing um, kind of gentrification processes and driving people out and the destruction of council houses again. So kind of the position necessarily forces us um, to expand. Um, and as I was saying, I mean, we kind
kind of know that there's no solution to the housing crisis that relies on building more, well, I've got it in inverted commas in my quotes, more luxury private rental properties. Actually, the properties in Stratford Halo are they're bad little things. They're, they're marketed as luxury properties, but you go in and they're, they're small and bare. I mean, they're substantially smaller than council houses, which were meant to be built for working people in the 60s. Um, so we know we know this isn't a solution for the private renters. Um, so we were we were really inspired, actually, that um, like a piece of the mums kind of borrowed this tactic, which we borrowed from a, a, a French group, um, because this is absolutely a situation where people are being forced into the private rental sector, where it, which is inherently exploitative for everyone, but for people in their situation, particularly um, unsuitable. And some activists feel part of um, London renters, particularly the, the big street in Hackney, were kind of involved in, in supporting that. Um, Similarly, the, the structure occupation kind of necessarily in its own way opens up questions around gentrification because this is part of a, a long process in Elephant of getting rid of the Haygate, the coming kind of destruction of the Aylesbury and its replacement with, again, these, these rather mean luxury houses. Um, and at the moment, we're kind of planning an action um, around the Haygate as Southwark and as Southwark tenants and Lambert renters, but also funded in conjunction with other housing actors. So just to conclude, we, I mean, kind of think it's it's essential to take action because um, it's it, it's necessary almost to to interrupt this kind of fatalism around housing. Like, um, we all know how bad it is, and and, and when I say we, I don't actually just mean people in this room. Everyone knows how bad housing is in London. Um, it's I mean, particularly around private rental, it, it's a popular media story, even in something like the Mail. Um, <laughs> but this kind of causes a kind of, it causes a few things, it causes a kind of fatalism, but the, the problem seems to overwhelm it, basically, and, and small actions kind of need to interrupt this a bit. Also, the way it's kind of conceptualised in the media is, is, is problematic. A lot, of the, a lot of the focus seems to be on um, young professionals, people who maybe 10 years ago could have bought somewhere nice in Clapham, five years ago could have bought somewhere I don't know, tolerable and balanced. <laughs> and now can't buy anything. This this is only kind of one face of why people are renting private. And people are renting private because they can't buy, they're renting private because there aren't enough council houses, they're renting private because of the criminalisation of property. Um, they're also renting privately because of the difficulty of setting up your own alternatives, which we, we heard about earlier around housing so on. Um, and on the other hand, the focus is, again, something that really can't actually lead to kind of um, militant organisation. It's the kind of, it's kind of situations of like absolutely catastrophic overcrowding where the intervention is meant to be kind of state or local government kind of bureaucratic or emergent sort of intervention. But again, it's not kind of presenting like a, a total solution. So what's kind of interesting to think about, um, about like housing action is that it can build solidarity within groups, but also um, across tenure. So on that side, create like a large group of people within front. But at the same time, it also kind of polarizes. It polarizes between people who who need housing, people for whom housing satisfies like a basic need for somewhere to live, you know, for the means of staying alive. And it polarizes us, these people, against those, as, as we were hearing with Danny Dolan's talk, those who profit so handsomely. And this is kind of the polarization. 